This conference will now be recorded. All right. If you got any questions, make sure you uh, fire. Today, we're going to have to get straight to business. Uh, we'll have, now with football coming up, like I said, we'll have multiple meetings, especially leading into the season, so we could go over all the money management in details. Um, but there's just too much action today. We have to get through the baseball. We got to get through the preseason. We got to get through MMA. I just got WNBA. I just got CFL. So we got so much action. Like I said, if lines move, then it's not even no longer bets we could possibly make. So let's just move into the CFL real fast and see if this is a bet we will get down on. Edmonton, Hamilton, over. Edmonton, Hamilton, over. Yeah, they're going over 51. Edmonton. All right, they played earlier in the season. Wow, they flew over 51, huh? Yeah. Hamilton. They're coming off games, putting up 23. The other team's putting up 75 points their last two. Yeah, I'm good. You guys, if anyone had to lean that way, and these uh, group that bet it confirms it for you, there you go. Sharp Mont play on 785 over 51, 785 over 51. Edmonton Hamilton. Uh, personally, I did not piggyback that and will not release as a premium, but I do take a percentage of all the accounts that I provide. So obviously, I want this to go over. I just don't see uh, much there for me to like. Now, let's look at the WNBA real quickly because we do have a WNBA play as well. New York and Las Vegas, New York and Las Vegas. And once again, another over, another over. There, they're going over 174 and a half, over 174 and a half, and also over 89 in the first half, over 89 in the first half. Now, I do see both still available. The 89 costs about $1.15 to go over in the first half, and uh, for the game, I see 74 and a half out here in Vegas. And at bookmaker on screen 75 that's one of those where i would take it anyway even when i was a mover um a runner actually not us i'm moving now when i used to have to run uh i would still take it because uh the worst if they push then um if i go 75 and they win the worst i could do is push if they go over 74 and a half and i go over 75 if they cash their 74 and a half ticket then it had to go 75 or higher so the worst I could do is possibly push. Now, if they go over 75 and I have a 75 and a half ticket in my pocket, now that's a whole different story because the land 75, they push, I lose. Never want to be found, leave yourself in that position. You want to be in the position where worst case is a push, no harm, no foul, but not where it's a loss when these guys push. That's when your results will not reflect um, the group you're moving for. Took me a while to, to grasp that concept. Now, let's look at this real quickly. Head to head matchup. They haven't played since June, where they did go under, scoring 172 points. Now, same total, no adjustment made. Uh, no adjustment made, huh? Even though New York's coming off a game that they put up 103 points, and then they put up 82, 81, 91. Vegas, 85, 89, 84, 84. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm good. I'm good. If, if any if anyone had a lean on the uh, over New York Las Vegas, it was just confirmed uh, from one of the betting syndicates that got down on the over, and uh, we're gonna leave that one alone. Personally, I'm good. We don't we we, get, we have so much action, so much plus CV information is gonna come through these two hands. Over these next five months, we don't have to force anything. We're going to sit back and place the very good best bets. And because we're behind for the year, it makes it even more important to tighten the parameters. So that's why I'm so excited about this football season. 
Um, remember, we did that last year because if you remember, we were down. Remember, we we it was it, we started off really hot when we launched Steam Room, then we got crushed, and we had that cold streak, and then the football season took it over and we did damage. So uh, we'll see if that happens again. Now we got to get back to baseball. Um, let's see when these rest of these footballs start today. The early kicks went off. Next one is until 4 p.m. Eastern. So we're good. We're good. And I got the baseball covered up until 4 p.m. Eastern also. So together we'll do the rest right now. Um, All right, just seeing what is coming in right now. All right. Okay, we could go right into baseball now. That's it. No, no, no more WNBA. No CFL and just baseball. Real quick though, let's uh, do our calisthenics real fast so we know how to bet size and why we haven't had to adjust anything so far this year. Has not been a good year at all. I tell you when I win, I tell you when I lose. And right now we're sitting at about minus 160 units. And what does that put it down? Let's do the math. Tell you what it is right now. Let's say we we do it the right way. The way I preach to partner with me, the way I've been able to turn 100 to 500 into 1,000 to 5,000. I work with a 400 dime bankroll. Last year, I increased starting capital by 80%. That means I made off of that 320 dimes minus expenses. This or that made about 300 dimes. Yeah, that's factual. M numbers don't lie. But this year, that hasn't been the case. Fortunately for me, I still got time, plenty of time plenty of time and uh let's go if we are doing it correctly we're betting 0 0.25 0 0.50 0 0.75 1 percent 1.25 we are never betting more than 1.25 on a dog flat or to win 1.25 on a favorite which means if it's minus 200 obviously we're laying 250 to win 1.25 the goal is to keep our risk of ruin at 20 percent where we will double our bankroll a little better than eight out of 10 times, and we will lose it a little less than two out of 10 times. I'm comfortable with that because I play the long game, meaning I don't expect to just bet today or this week or this month or even this year. So even though my goal is to win in all those time frames, I don't need to because if your goal is different, like you need to win today's bet, then the point spread don't matter, meaning your CLV doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is winning that bet. But if you plan on betting again tomorrow, next week, next month, next year, then winning this bet today isn't the, the, the goal. The goal is placing a good bet. Sure, we want the good bet to win. But bad bets win all the time, just like good bets lose all the time. But if you continue to place good bets long term, you cannot lose money unless you mismanage your risk. Because even if you place great bets, if you mismanage your risk, you will not turn a profit. That's a mathematical fact, and I'm living proof of that with access to winning information, not winning. So at 0 0.25, 0 0.50, 0 0.75, 1%, 1.25, let's say we have a $10,000 bankroll. What are we betting? What are we betting? 0.25. That's $25 per unit. 25, 50, 75, 100, 125. That's it. And it's based on the rating system at wager talk of 1%, 2%, 3%, 4%, 5%. Obviously, we don't recommend ever betting that type of percentage of your bankroll because you're going to increase your risk of ruin to 90 plus percent, where 
even with the winning information, you still will lose your bankroll over nine out of 10 times. Yeah, let me repeat that. With winning information, if you overbet your bankroll, you will fall into the category where your risk of ruin is upwards of 90%, which means you will lose your bankroll over nine out of 10 times and only double it less than one out of 10 times. That's with an edge. Again, risk management is everything. So let's get back to that. $25 a unit, 160 units times 25. It's down four dimes, four dimes. Still got six. We're still at the six. I haven't had to adjust. If you've done it right, remember, we only adjust up five, 50% or down 50%. Actually, even year to year is even better. But for those trying to build quicker, I get it especially if you're able to replenish your bankroll, then 50% is very doable. Um, the only thing is it's better to do it on the up, meaning when, when you lose 50% and now you're decreasing your bankroll, you now have to win twice as much to get back to even. So you're going to start making it harder on yourself, which is why I get so careful when we're around that range. I'm, I, I, I know the volatility of sports betting is the type of market which I go in prepared that my bankroll is going to increase and decrease by 50, 20, 30, 40% multiple times in the year. That's going to happen. It's the volatility of sports betting. That's just how it is. It's like crypto. It's not a market anyone should invest in unless they're prepared for 30%, 40%, 50%, 70% swings in the course of a 12 month period that's going to happen if someone's not comfortable with that then they should invest in in only gold gold's never going to go 70 percent in a 12 month period but it's also never going to go up 70 percent in a 12 month period either so although the the the, the plus side is you're never going to lose 80 percent you're never either going to gain 80 percent either that's the negative but you have to figure out what you're comfortable with and when it comes to sports betting, it's very comparable to crypto, where most people aren't able to win long term, just like most people aren't able to trade long term because the swings are just too violent. Meaning that the, 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 the being able to go up or down 30, 40 percent of their bankroll and still continue to do the right thing even up 30, 40 percent and do the right thing, not not start over betting is very difficult for most which is why even with crypto remember i'm talking about the downside let's talk about the upside risk what i see all the time when things are going good people start over betting guess what happens when you over bet and things are going great once again you're increasing your risk of ruin just because we're winning doesn't mean you've decreased your risk of ruin your risk of ruin is still at 90 percent the fact we may be winning doesn't mean anything you're still in that category. And it's just like with crypto, when you see it go up and what do, what do those got, those type of, the, the ones that say they're in it for the long term, but really aren't, what do they start doing? They start leveraging. They start, they start trading on leverage. Now all of a sudden, no, no, not just the money I have to trade. Now I'm going to 3X, 5X, 10X, 20X of leverage on it, right? I want all that upside risk. Are you kidding me? That's why they get wiped out over and over and over and over and get liquidated and liquidated and liquidated and liquidated. And BlackRock ends up owning their, their, their Bitcoin for pennies on the dollar as they get liquidated, 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 buying on leverage. So please, yeah, I tell you when I win, I tell you when I lose. I'm going to do this for as long as I feel like doing it. And I've done this now. This will be the 10th year. I'm very confident we're going to have a great close to the year. And this will be the ninth winning year in the last 10. But let's say it isn't. Let's say it isn't. Guess what? The sun's going to come up on January 1st. It's going to be eight of 10 winning years. And I'm going to fucking get back to work and grind and do damage. And no, now I have this to work on, to make up. Like, I, I, I got to keep it real with you guys. Regardless. Remember, one long war with battles along the way. 
Now, I do it year by year because we have to keep score. It's the business we're in. But if you're doing this long term, then the only thing that matters is that bankroll we started with, that we're partnering up with, and where we are a few years from now. That's the truth. That, that really is the truth. And if you're not in that mindset, let's not do this. Let's not do the, the bet with Ace and, you know, bet on your own or, or buy picks here, buy 5% or, or whatever. When you feel I'm running hot or someone else is running hot, do your thing. But just admit after you sit back that maybe it's not, you know, everyone's not built for it. Because here's what's going to happen. I'm telling you now. After this year, I'm going to have another 12 months and then another 12 months and then another 12 months. Let's have two more years ahead of me. I'm going to be able to say I won this many years out of that many, this many, that many. Because even if like, let's say, God forbid, this is, a, a, we, I don't recover 160 units. I only recover 150 of them, 159 of them. And I'm still down. I, got, I can't call it a winning year. Let's just say for whatever reason, right? I'm still coming back next year. It's still going to be, that I'm still a favorite next year, the year after that, the year after that. And those are the guys that are going to see the long-term benefits of having an edge. Most never do. Most never do. Most will never recognize it. Like I wouldn't have recognized it if I just gave up when I was a runner and I got sick of losing bankrolls. I would have been like, this is it's just, it's bullshit. It's all bullshit. These groups don't win. I could have blamed them instead of blaming myself that I was taking bad numbers, I was over betting, I was chasing, I was putting in some action they weren't, and like, hey, I was betting that Monday night football game even when they didn't. So I had to keep it real, keep it real with myself. And slowly but surely, I let my ego take my pounding for me, and I started doing the right things. And it didn't come quick, I'll tell you that much, I promise you. It didn't come in the first year, the second year, the third year, the fourth, it took a couple of years. But then the five years, I turn around, oh shit, it's 2015. Guess what? I'm ready to launch the big move because I now have five winning years under my belt. I know I can do it. I know I can do it. Now let me document every single pick I'm going to release because I'm that confident. And that's what I did. Another year, another year, another year, another year, another year, another year. Because I was playing the long game. I finally got sick of doing it the wrong way and having the same shit happen and hoping it changes and that somehow, some way, my luck was going to fucking change, even though my actions weren't. Like, what was I, crazy? And I'm going to keep repeating these things over and over and over and over again because this is what's more important than any pick than anything else. Because I could sit and hustle and try to, to, to take package money every single day which is very easy when you have a brand in this industry, very easy to do. Or I could try to actually educate betters of novice, of semi-serious to dead serious and actually show them how it truly works for those that win long-term, like the groups that win, how the market works, What's really going on? Not the gambling Twitter nonsense, not those free pick videos and the DraftKings pushing this shit and Fendu pushing that shit and the same game parlays and the no sweat bets and all that bullshit. I'm talking about the actual 0.5% of sports bettors who move these lines, who have positive lifetime earnings, who've documented their positive, profitable results. That's what I was doing and going to continue doing. That is the goal of this theme room, to give a window and a ride to anyone that wants to jump on it. First is the window to see how it actually gets done. Not with three picks and it's volume, man. I'm sorry. We've explained why. And I'm not talking crazy volume where it floods you and makes it too hard to do where the average person can't have a job, a family, and still bet. But I'm not, I'm talking, you don't get to wake up at 10 a.m., look at your email, get three best bets, fire, and get rich. That's not going to happen. Anyone that tells you different fucking lying to you. That's just not how markets work. 
that's like that and they those stock picks it doesn't happen like that you know those got those free stock pick shit so with that out of the way again i love you guys and i want to see you win or i want to see you not lose with me like if you are going to partner with me like know what you're signing up for and be prepared to follow through because i'm going to follow through i'm a man of my word and i will follow through and that's why i've come here every single week except when time just you know again things come up in life that you just can't foresee sometimes or for whatever reason things happen uh, otherwise i've come in week in week out win or lose i will come in and uh make sure i, I am accountable not just uh there to 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 put up bullshit streaks on twitter Man, we're going nuts all right all right all right all right let's get to that baseball action Oh, I let me let me answer this, please. I would think most of your subs could care less about the next couple of years. This year is what matters. You have been terrible the last six months. Well said, Private. That is very true. Undeniable. Unfortunately, though, I do care about the next few years, just like I care about last year. I my goal, sir, isn't to win when you decide to bet. When you wake up and you decide I'm gonna bet those six months. That's not what my I'm here to do. I started, I, I've been documenting my stuff since 2015. Although you may not care about all that profit, there's guys in this room that made that money with me. So it, it does matter. It doesn't matter to you because you might have just signed up six months ago. But the world doesn't revolve around you, sir, unfortunately. So like, just like I, 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 I like I'm, over any time period, you're always going to be able to find any any year, any 12 months that are horrific. I have 10, nine years documented. That's a hundred and something months. Of course, you're going to find 10, 12 months. You're totally talking about six months of losing. Yes, absolutely. That's going to happen. In fact, I promised, I promised that's going to happen. I promised that's going to happen so that I don't mislead anybody. Again, there's a reason I am number one in profit at Wager Talk since the site started, although I came on two years after. And there's a reason that's going to continue as long as I stay there because I have a proven hedge and I can't guarantee I will win over every sample size of time, but I have guaranteed to win over a statistical significant sample size. That's been proven. Now, again, you can say it doesn't matter to you how I did last year because you weren't here. That money's still real. Like, I, I still have that. So, I, again, I can't time when you're going to decide to join me, when you're going to quit, how long you're going to follow, if you're going to follow. That I have no control over. I have zero control over. Only you could control that. But I, I, it's my responsibility when, with the five days someone decides to buy. If I don't win those five days, I suck. The other that eight years don't matter. It means nothing because that guy didn't buy those eight years. The only thing, that, yeah, it may only matter to you about that week. That's true. And it should. I get it. But again, I'm not doing this for you, sir. I'm doing this for the... Uh, uh, I was going to say the number of people, a lot of people of subs that I have. And I have to remember that there are guys with me that have been here years and hopefully are here years forward. So I help them manage along the way, just like with the short term guys. Um, but if uh, you could care less about last year or the years after again, then we won't partner next year. You know what I mean? What can I tell you? Ernesto, I thank you. Thank you, sir. I'm very confident, Ernesto. I'm very confident 
again, I don't, it isn't even about the, I, I, I like repeating all about the money management principles because this is something I've talked about over and over and over. And I've, I've done again and again and again and again, because I've been in this industry long enough that I've said it year in and year out that this happens over and over and over again, because every single year, every single year, no matter how good of a year I have, I'm going to have a cold streaks. There will be cold streaks, which is why I've always said, if you don't know how to lose, you'll never win. Because even during our most profitable years, we had to overcome losing. That's it, which is the bottom line. Over any 12-month period, if you're going to turn a profit, you're going to have some horrific runs. That's just math. There's no way to overcome it because the edge in sports bettings isn't great. You don't have an 8%, 15% edge. So there's going to be that volatility of ups and down, ups and downs, up and down. But when in doubt, zoom out. And when I zoom out, that's what I see. I see eight of nine winning years. I see number one in profit since the site launched. And I see for 2024, I have 160 units to make up. So it's the ninth winning year out of 10, or it'll be eight winning years out of 10. That's just the truth. Numbers never don't lie people do so no matter how i i spin it how the anyone else spins it the truth is in the numbers the numbers always tell the truth and when in doubt you just zoom out you always zoom out all right Let's see. Let's see. Wow. Tons of tons of tons of questions. Let it come in. We're I'm just looking through the baseball coming in. Oh. All right. We left off at 6 p.m. Eastern. I'm just starting with Phillies, Washington. We won't have too much baseball added. Let me look real quick. All right, let's see if something came in there. I'm almost done, guys. Just looking real quick at this baseball stuff to see if we're going to add. Minnesota, Texas, just got a Minnesota, Texas, Minnesota, Texas. All right, they're going over eight and a half, Minnesota, Texas. I like eight, but if there was eight, let me see, let me see. I like the eight, would have probably been a 4% play. See this even money. Minnesota, Texas, Minnesota, Texas. I can't wait till NFL and we start going over game by game.
right, you guys ready? 3% play, 3% play. We're going to go 913, 913 over. That's Minnesota, Texas over. We'll go over eight and a half, 3% play because we're going to go over eight and a half at even money. Up to minus 105, but you should be able to get, I'm getting even money everywhere. All right, we we'll get that bet in. Oh wait, this guy's giving me plus 102. Plus 101 actually, but I'll take it. A dollar on every hundred extra, why not? For me, it's a three dime bet. What's that, an extra $30? If it wins, those add up, right? All right. All right, let's keep going. Oh, I passed on that yesterday. It cost us. It cost me. Huh? So that Cleveland, Milwaukee, we already went under, right? Yep. I like it. I like that Cleveland Milwaukee. Cleveland Milwaukee having gone under eight and seven and a half. It's a strong, strong sign. Strong sign. Let's see if we could let me see where is that? Yeah, Cleveland, Milwaukee, I'm going to add 1% at 7.5. We got down at a better number earlier, um, but I'm not just going to upgrade it at that because it wouldn't be fair to you guys. Ace keeps it real. Ace keepers are real. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take Cleveland Brewer and the Brewers, and I'm going to go under. Seven and a half, up to minus 115. 1% 1 added. There we go. Now that's fair. Now let me go bet it. So that way we got 3% at eight and 1% uh, at seven and a half. A little dollar cost average in, in, bet, in, uh, in sports. Yeah, I want to just, I had already circled last night as a strong lean for me. And uh, anytime, anytime you see uh, a key number like that, that's big. That's big. 
So we definitely want to acknowledge that. We already went under in San Diego and Colorado, I believe. Yeah, that was another one. That's why I like always make sure even now how sick the work the night before. So you're ready to go for when those plays are coming in. I'll move those lines pretty quickly sometimes. All right. I think we're good with bases. Atlanta, LA. Uh, we're good. Now, I just want to look at this football real quick for and, and, and share some things because there's been a lot of two-way action in the football. Um, I'm seeing a lot of it. And preseason, you expect it because of the big line movements, which is why I don't want you guys to get discouraged at all. Um, if you see a buyback, that's me telling you I respect you too much to gamble your money because my life will be so much easier if I just ignore it and let you roll the dice. And if it wins, great. If it loses, I didn't. I bought it back for myself, so it doesn't cost me anything except on my wages talk record. But I don't do that. I won't. I wouldn't do that. I just again, I want it. The goal of this was to do something that it shows exactly what I'm doing every day for real, not what I'm doing as a tout to sell picks, but what I'm doing as a, a winning sports better. And that's very hard to sell because most people are used to buying picks. And when they're buying picks, they're just used to buying picks. Give me your picks on those three NFL games. Great. This is why 99% of touts aren't showing you long-term results because those long-term results are negative because picks cannot overcome the VIG and beat this betting market. It's just not possible. You can do it by taking advantage of inefficient numbers and getting out ahead of information. Now, we're able to do that a lot of times. When you're able to do that, sometimes as the week progresses, more information comes in. And as information comes in, you have to be willing to change your thesis. You have to be willing to adjust and not just say, well, just roll the dice, bucket. I'm already on this side. I'd rather lay, pay the VIG than hope for the best. Hope's not a hedge. So when that happens, I'm going to end up sending the buyback. And if it pisses you off, then no, oh, no, that wasn't my intentions. It was out of respect, not out of irritating you. It's not like, it thought, what do I benefit from? How, as, a, as someone trying to sell a product even, how would I benefit by pissing off my client? But I got to do right by you. And if the information changes, and I know these groups are changing their, or getting off the game, why would I want you to risk your money? And so I don't know why people get so mad at those things. I don't, I don't understand it. Um, again, so many times we find ourselves ahead of the market. Look at the college football that I sent you. Look at where those lines are now. Well, when you're able to do that, sometimes later information is going to contradict early info. So you got to take the good with the bad sometimes. Please understand, we're, we're, you're actually reflecting how a plus EV winning sports better does it. And sometimes that is what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to buy some bets back we're gonna have to attempt some middles especially when we got out ahead we got such a good number if it's uh, uh such a, a good middle opportunity i'm not gonna pass that out and just roll the dice again i do this for prop for cash for pro, like i'm out betting this shit for real i show you my bets i'm betting this stuff so if i'm gonna be able to middle it and put in a nice plus CB middle, and I got three dimes here, three dimes there. Dude, I'm gonna do it. Are you kidding me? That's the move. 
It's not the move if you're selling picks. Of course not. But I'm not selling picks. I'm not, it's not what I'm doing. Um, so again, like as long as we're on the same page, I promise you, you will not be disappointed. You will see this football season, the damage we do. But football is one of the most profitable, if not the most profitable sport for the books. For that reason, people lose. People lose a lot of money. They fake the worst bets, the most negative EV bets in NFL more than any other sport they're willing to make. We're able to sneak in there, grab some of that EV and profit. Even more so college football, even more so. But again, it's a grind and it's work. And it's getting out ahead of numbers like you saw we've done already in college football. But by the time that week one of college football rolls around, we may have a six-point middle. Dude, I'm going to take it. If I could try to win 6000 for $300 in VIG with zero, just that's the only risk, 300 to win $6,000, i am going to do that every time with that kind of window. Now, again, in the pick selling business, you don't do that. You just take the, the good, I got six points better. I'm probably going to have a winning pick. Let me get the, the credit for a winning pick towards my record so I could promote Monday. That, that, that's not the goal here. It's not the goal. The goal is to, to maximize ROI and actual profit, which is why I still brag about last year, 80% increase the capital because that was real. That happened. That happened. And anyone that was here did that. Anyone who followed along actually did that. So, again, football, it's happening. You're already seeing it, and you're seeing these uh, lines are moving. Also, preseason, I warned it in the before the first week that unlike when the regular season starts after week one, because the week one line's been up forever, so those lines are already going to be extracted most of the value. But after week one, you, if you have multiple outs, you should have no problems getting down on most, at least eight of 10 bets, nine of 10 bets. If not, if you have multiple outs, for sure. Again, we're getting them early enough the way I'm set up, um, especially now waiting for football to get you guys the plays. It shouldn't be a problem. But preseason, I explained going in, it's different because most of the the, the, the recreational bettors they're barely touching it. If they are, they're mostly parlaying it. They're not taking big positions or anything like that. So it's mostly a game of wise guys versus the books. And when that's the game, they move the line significantly, which is the same reason we see it in college basketball totals. Because the only one betting uh, University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee versus University of Wisconsin-Green Bay college basketball total are the wise guys versus the books. So, of course, that total, if it gets steamed, it's going to move three points where Duke, North Carolina gets steamed. That might move one point. Why? Because they have enough recreational risk on it to offset it. Not the case. Not the case in Wisconsin, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Green Bay. Well, same thing with preseason, regular season. So don't get discouraged. Don't get discouraged. Instead, focus on getting out, and you'll get down on the NBA, NFL. Someone said, kind of surprised to see so many preseason NFL bets given all the early unknowns. Again, when it comes to NFL preseason, historically, it's been very profitable for us. Why? Because the groups I work with tend to get their hands on a lot of this information before the books do, which is why we've crushed a lot of these lines. There's just as many unknowns to the book as it is to the better, which doesn't put us at any kind of disadvantage. Um, if we, and the proof is by the line moves. If they were confident in their number, there's no reason to move the number. It's their lack of confidence that forces the move that makes it so beatable. In fact, it's the, it's the opposite, Mark. It, you, because of the volatility, we should be betting even. We should want to be betting even more, because that those, the 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 significant line moves proves to us how beatable it is. Unlike Sunday NFL, those lines ain't moving much. Someone's got to be injured. A quarterback's got to get hurt for the line to move three plus points. It ain't moving off steam. It is in preseason, not off injuries. Not off 
weather, just off of sharp, sharp money. So believe me, well, I'm not an action junkie. I don't even watch the stuff, as you guys know. Um, I'm just looking for the most beatable markets and uh, rest assured. Pre well, again, I can't guarantee you we're going to win every preseason or even we're going to win this preseason. But the volatility in the lines is what lets you know the strength and weakness of a market more times than not, if not all the time. Because again, if you're confident that your numbers on point that the with the vig not neither team a nor team b gives the betters an edge which is ultimately the goal of the book then why move my line just keep taking i'm getting 11 to 10 anyway keep bet keep booking it but you're seeing they're moving three four five points some of these games not on injuries but because the lack of confidence in the opening number that is I wish we could pre. I wish the, the the regular season was like preseason. I I really do. All right, let's look at some of these NFL real quick, so I could break down which are some of the two way action for you guys. I'm sure a lot of you guys have your own opinions there. As you know, we got the Baltimore Ravens today early. Giants Texans. Uh Giants Texans. I think we yeah we got the Giants in the first half. Bengals, Bears, Bengals, Bears. We took the Bears in the first half. I know also Bears got hit. Dude, Bears got hit. Minus five, minus five and a half, minus six, minus three and a half, minus four and a half, minus five and a half in the first half. So that's one of those where obviously players are in or players are out. Game plan was leaked. Game plan came out. And uh, doesn't mean you're going to cash a ticket. But if you're able to get down, let's just see where that closed. This is a perfect example. This is a perfect example. Chicago Bears, first half line. Minus three and a half, closes minus six. Even if you got down at minus four, four and a half, and in the first half, and it closes six, you are mathematical certainty to turn a profit long term if you manage your risk correctly just by doing that over and over and over again it don't matter if, she, if if cincinnati wins this first half by 40 points the outcome don't mean shit that's irrelevant the only thing that matters is that you were able to get down at three and a half and four four and a half and it closed six because i can't explain this any clearer Good bets lose. Bad bets win. The difference is, if you continue making bad bets, you will go broke. If you continue making good bets, you will not go broke. It's that simple. If you're only placing one bet, then it doesn't matter. Whether it's a good bet or a bad bet don't mean shit. The only thing that matters is that it's a winning bet. I that I, I go along with that shit I defend that that there's nothing truer than that and that's the only thing that should matter is cashing that ticket fuck the closing line movement forget the handicap forget all that nonsense just cash the damn ticket but if we're going to bet next week we're going to bet next month we're going to bet next year then no that isn't the goal the goal is to place good bets knowing they will lose that's it. That's the game. That, for some reason, most recreational bettors just cannot wrap their hands or heads around that. Just, just couldn't. All right, my man Neil. Today you gave out Bears first half, got a minus three. Good for you. Fuck yeah. But couldn't pass up Bengals plus six. Stupid to bet both ends of that. No way. Great bet betting both ends of that, especially first half. Dude, you got only half the game. It's almost worth double the point spread. You know what I mean? Just think about it. And most most times they're cutting the game line in half for the first half. So you're like getting double a middle, even though it looks like it's only a three, which only shit, NFL middle of a, of a minus three and a plus six. Dude, give that to me every day. I'll bet nothing. Every Sunday, I'll only middle. I won't even bet, forget it. I won't even look at sides or totals. Who gives a shit? I'll only do that, Neil. I'll only look for minus threes plus sixes all day, all day. That's the only bets I'd want. Um, so no, you, but to do it in the first half, bro, 
I don't care how, whatever happens, you did the best thing. The best thing, bro. Yeah, that's thinking like a long-term win. Like, yes, I'm, you're setting yourself up to win because you're betting from a position. That's from a position of strength. That's you got him by the balls and you're like, bro, I'm not letting go. I'm not letting go. I got the best of it. Both ways, I got you. I got you at minus three and I got you at plus six. Go ahead. Check. Now, hopefully, they go out and do the job so you could mate, so you could check mate him. But you got him in check, bro, with his back against the wall. And it looks like mate to me. It looks like mate to me. Yeah, now, again, they got to go out there and cooperate. We can't do their job. That's the problem. We can't do their job. That's like my boy that texted me last night about the He's like, damn, you, got, you guys crushed those CFB lines. Your boys crushed the CFB lines. Great job, he wrote. That's what he texted me. Great job. I swear to you. Here's what I texted back. Because this is the truth. This is the absolute truth. Let my boy read you. Now the hard part. Yep. They got to do their job. Yeah. They eat that. We did our part. That's the easy part. We placed the good bets. Not the easy part, but the part we, we you know, we understand how to do. But now is the, now is the difficult part. These assholes got to go out there and do their, what was expected of them. Can't do that for them. Just like I can't judge the fights, can't ref the games. None of that shit. I can't do any of that shit. The only thing I can do is place a good bet. And my man Neil placed two great bets. A, a, a great middle, forgive me. An amazing freaking middle is what he placed. Good for you. Good for you. And again, I don't want to confuse anybody with the middles and all that um but i just want to get you in the mindset of wagering as a trader not wagering as a fan as you're the you're, you're making trades you're not making picks you're not trying to predict the outcome nobody can do that we're all guessing like you're going to put your heart on money on guesses like those kind of guesses are you kidding me? There's fucking 45, 50 moving pieces to an NFL game on each sideline. Dude, I'm going to predict how all those 50 moving pieces are going to react for three next three hours. You've lost your damn minds. Get the, you're crazy. All those moving pieces, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really predict how they're all going to move, how everyone's mind's going to work for those next three hours. You're nuts. You're nuts. It's a fool's errand. We're all fooling ourselves. And when we predict it right, we, 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 that's even worse. That's the worst confirmation bias you could ever hope for. Actually thinking like we're right. The best you could do is beat numbers as a sports better. That's the job. That's the job. Get down on good numbers. And how do you know you got down on a good number? The market's going to let you know. The market's going to let you know. It always does. Go ahead, Google. Google. Efficient market hypothesis. Efficient market hypothesis. The market is going to let you know. Most things are all priced in. Very rarely is anything not priced into the market. It's those slight inefficiencies that happen because of the biases of the participants is why we find value otherwise none of us would if if the participants weren't skewed and biased none of us could make money betting sports let me repeat that at lane 11 to 10 none of us would profit the reason we're able to is because the 99.5 percent is willing to place bad bets and a perfect example of that is every Super Bowl when they'll lay minus 115 on a coin flip. And it's one of the most popular bets of the Super Bowl. We all know it's even money. Everybody knows that. A child knows that. That it's 50-50 a coin flip. So if I put up a dollar, I should get a dollar. If I guess right. But no, no, no. They say put up a dollar 15 to a dollar. And you know what? People do it all day long. All day long. So you're telling me they're not willing to place bad bets? Really? People aren't willing to place bad bets? Fuck, they ain't. All day long they do.
all day long they do, hoping they win them, hoping they win them. That's not what we do. That's why nine and eight out of nine years, and I'm gone. I'm I'm so I'm so focused on making it nine to ten. Like I have I have my own challenge. Ace has his own challenge right here. I look at it every single day, every single day to remind me. All right, let's get to that football. Lions chief. Let me tell you what I got. Let me tell you what I got. All right. One of the groups I work with actually got down on Detroit, if you can believe this, at plus four, at plus four. So these guys like the Lions early. Now, they're, they're a winning plus CB group. That's actually a bot, okay? They get out ahead of the market, probably eight to 10 times, nine to 10 bets. But occasionally trying to do that, it's going to go against you because later in the week, information is going to come out. Oh, this quarterback's not playing or this is the rotation. And in that case, they got to eat it. Now, these guys got to eat it. If they got Detroit plus four, they can't get off the bet. There's nothing you could do. In that case, you eat it. That's it. Nothing you can do. It happens to me all the time. But it's all those other times that we got Chicago minus two and a half. So uh, nothing on KC. None of the groups I work with did come in on KC. So not sure where that KC steam came from. Sorry, it's just stuff's coming through. Nothing we can use, nothing we can use. Sure, like why late minus 200 in baseball if the Yankees continue to lose this game? That's minus 18 loss between that and Houston. Why lay minus 200? Let me see. We laid minus 205. What did, what did the Yankees close? They closed minus 228 at bet online. Now they're losing. I don't know. I didn't know. That. If I knew they were going to be down for nothing at the top of the third inning, Sherlock, I promise you, I wouldn't have bet them. I swear to you. Well, I probably would have even bet Detroit first five for 5%. But we didn't know that, bro. Like, what do you, I didn't, we didn't know that then. Again, I, you don't, if you didn't like it before the game, no, I, you don't have to bet it. Like, that's how they bet it. The group I work with. In fact, you want to hear something nuts? Here's how they bet it. I'll show you now. They bet. Yank here. I swear to you. You can see it right here. Yankees also for the first five, they bet them first five run line and money line. I didn't send 15 sides of it out. I was even more selective than they were. But they bet money line Yankees for the game, run line Yankees for the game. Money line Yankees first five, run line Yankees first five. And I I move for these groups that you know that's what they want. I can't tell them. Don't bet the Yankees. I'm going to be down 18 units if you guys lose. They don't give a shit about my 18 units. Like they're going to, if I don't want to bet it, I don't have to bet it. Um, again, as far as why not one and a half, I think it's a different bet. I mean, again, I, if if the we did bet one and a half, we did bet minus one and a half. I just didn't want to uh, give out four different bets on that with them on the road since we already had them for the series and um take on as much risk as they did especially since we were already up one nothing in that series bet but yeah unfortunately did not foresee them going down for nothing that quickly to this team hopefully it's not the uh
Oh, oh sorry. All right, let me finish that uh, NFL because I got to get back. I got to finish some uh, MMA stuff that's co going to come in because I want to finish you guys' MMA card. I got to send you your uh, finalized, the MMA. And I need to watch some of the weigh-ins again. And actually the face-offs more than anything. Lions, lines, lines. Okay, Vikings, Browns, Vikings, Browns, Vikings, Browns. Let me see what we have, Vikings, Browns. Um, give me a sec. All right. Vikings, Browns. For me, that's a pass. That's a pass. It's got sucker bet written all over it on Cleveland. I'll tell you that. It's got sucker bet written all over. It got bet up. Got bet up to four and a half. From two and a half to four and a half. And then bet back down. Again, there's more manipulation. Prepare for more manipulation in this NFL season than I'd ever seen in my life. I've... I've Seen it in baseball like I've never seen it in my life this season. Not using that as the excuse, but it definitely did not help that I didn't realize it for a little bit. Um, but there is more manipulation now than I've ever seen, than I've ever seen by all the groups. And like I said, I don't work for all of them. I don't work with all of them. I don't share info with movers for all of them. So, And there's a lot going on that I don't have access to. But I put the piece, I got to put the pieces together. Um, and uh, I've been able to confirm that everybody with the power to manipulate is manipulating, is manipulating. And that simply means this. Get the screen to move in the direction you want earlier when the limits are lower. And then come back and pound the other side, 3, 4, 5, 10x at a better number late. Happens over and, and again, it used to happen before. Nothing, nothing, nothing like that. Um, like now. So be careful. Be very careful concluding offline moves um, this NFL season, especially early on. All right. Commanders, Dolphins. Commanders, Dolphins. I don't think I have anything there either, but let's just see. Ooh, opened one and a half, went to five, four and a half. Personally, I like the, the commanders, but there's no way. Line move tells me everything I need to know. No way would I bet it. Pass, 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 pass. Let's go. Bill Steelers, Bill Steelers. I did see stuff here. Hold on. All right, so we're off of the Chicago game. Yeah, that's that. We got the dial. Thank God. Yeah, we do got the Dolphins money line. Yes, yes, yes. Tells me everything I needed to know. That line move. All right, Dolphins, good play. I think. I think we're good there. I think we're good there. I think that what we definitely plays the good bet, and I like how it's sizing up there. Okay, so we got the Miami. We got the Miami. All right, Bill Steelers. Like I said, we did have. Um, I know there was some info there. Let me pull that up. All right. They laid Buffalo minus a half. Buffalo minus a half up to minus 115 
in the first half. Buffalo first half, Buffalo first half. Uh, I, I'm gonna pass. I think I'm gonna pass. Let me see something. Yeah, I'm actually going to put them to the side. Buffalo to the side as a possibility for first half. All right, Buffalo first half, possibility, possibility. Lean in that way. All right, Cardinals, Colts, Cardinals, Colts. Anything, did we bet anything then? Cards and Colts. All right, nothing there, nothing there. Maybe the under a little bit. A little bit on the under. Seattle, Tennessee, Seattle, Tennessee. I don't think we have anything there either. Seattle, Tennessee. Nothing there. Jets, Carolina, Jets, Carolina. I believe we got Carolina here. Yes, we do. Let me see what that line was. Mm, part of me wants to, ah, it's only preseason, we'll slow it down. Part of me wants to upgrade that Jets play, huh? I mean, Carolina play, Carolina play, Carolina play at home over the Jets. A little bit, a little bit. Ah, well, no reason to upgrade, we'll wait. Rams, Chargers, Rams, Chargers. Let's see, Rams, Chargers. That's a pass. That's a pass for sure. Bucks, Jags, Bucks, Jags. Nada. A little under, a little under, maybe Bucks Jazz. Yeah, I like the under. Last but not least, Dallas and the Raiders. Now we know we on LV. Minus the six. All right. All right, so we're good there in football. Uh, there, let me let you know the difference of a, a couple difference of opinions where we have conflicting information that Dallas game is one of those where we're on Vegas and uh, one of the groups I work with bet Dallas again they got out ahead of the market they tried to they took Dallas plus five actually um, and as you can see they could have got better number by waiting we were on the right side at least of the line move um, with Vegas. So we'll see how that plays out. Oh, 
Okay. Look at some of this MMA, then I'm going to have to get into the my UFC card to finalize it. Just going to give a couple leans on some fights we may not mess with. See what's come in. No, last thing that came in is that first half over in the Liberty. Let's pull up the fights. All right, I'm gonna run through real quick. So then we could get to, I could get back to watching that stuff and uh, finalize and gonna send out that 5% within the hour. Off the top, let's start at the top. Why not Izzy? You guys know I like the Izzy side. Over Duplessis. There is two-way sharp action, I can tell you that much. A lot of sharp money on Duplessis. I get it, um, especially when he was a bigger underdog earlier in the week. Could have got him at like plus 125 at one point just a week ago. He could have got Duplessis plus 125. Um, so there was definitely a lot of sharp action then on Duplessis. But I just think, is he, man, anything less than 150? I'm not sure to make the premium card. But that's definitely the way I lean. Also like the over, no surprise, it's four and a half. Um, you know, the history of ROI when it comes to three and a half and four and a half, so no surprise there. Ursa, Cara France, you guys already know, we're on the Cara France side. Tough fight for him for sure. Um, but if he's able to dictate where this one takes place and he keeps it standing, he will make it interesting. He lands a lot, lands a lot. And uh, with that takedown defense, he's faced a lot of takedown attempts. So it, it definitely has some statistical significance. I mean, he's faced over 50 attempts. He stuffed about 90, 88% of them. So if uh, Ursay can't mix in his wrestling, because he averages about two and a half takedown attempts per five minutes, if he can't mix that wrestling in, he gets hit a lot, man. Almost five, absorbs almost five significant strikes from a distance per minute. Uh, yeah. I like Cara France. Uh, Rosenstruck, Tuivasa. This line's gotten way out of hand now. The way it sits now, it's Tuivasa or pass. You're going to lay minus 250 on Rosenstruck. Again, he's on a nice little run. Don't get me wrong. And, uh, far as knockouts go and that's how do it to if you're going to get him out of there but i just i don't know man it seems like a big price delay even though to has lost four in a row now is that four straight yeah and even jarzinho man 
I forgot that Almeida sub was in that mix. I mean, if that's not going to happen here, it's only threats to KO. Like against Volkov. Mm, tough, 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 tough. Okay. We'll let that one go. Like I said, for me, it's dog or pass there right now. Tui Vasa or nothing. Um, Hook or Gamrot. Gamrot's going to win that fight, isn't he? Gamrot's going to win that fight, but Hooker's the bet. Does that make sense? Let me explain that. There's no way you could bet Gamrot right now. Look at it this way. He opened minus 240. Just a week ago, he was minus 300. So the break even then was 75%. Now it's minus 400. The break even's 80%. You already lost 5% in implied win probability just in the last seven days. From the opener, you've lost almost, what, over double digits in implied win probability. So you can't bet Gamrod or else you're just trying to bet the outcome. Who's going to win the fight? It doesn't matter about the price. Don't matter. It's kind of like I, I just want that car. I don't give a shit about the price. I don't care. I want that car. That's understandable. Some people, you know what I mean? That's how they approach things. Others are like, no, what is that car worth? What is it worth at four other dealerships? And am I getting the best price here? Right? Those guys are not going to ever lay Gamrod at 400 now if they could have got 300 earlier, 240 early before that. So for someone that looks for line value, there's only one way you could bet this. It's dog or pass. Now, is there a reason to bet hooker? Well, I think the reason is, again, same situation. Can he dictate where this fight takes place? Takedown defense, 81%. He's faced 77 takedown attempts. Stuffed 80 plus percent of them. But now he's facing a guy that attempts seven takedown attempts for five minutes. The difference is Gamrot don't have power. With Hooker, that's the threat. Like if you're, it's either you could wrestle him to death or you got a lot of power. Gamrot doesn't have power. I mean, he's got a one to five knockdown ratio. That's horrific. But it's the takedowns. Is he going to smother Hooker? Smother Hooker, smother Hooker. That's what the betting line shows, that that's what's going to happen. That he's just going to smother him, smother him, smother him. Look at the over. It's up to minus 240. 250 at DraftKings, so it looks like Gamrot, smother, 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 smother. Wait, will you share with us what online sports books change, charge the least amount of interest when you make a deposit? Just wondering because I use bet. Dude, you pay, you pay to deposit? Yeah, sorry, I couldn't do that. I, 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 like I said, I, I don't use uh, post accounts because I don't like leaving my money in non-interest bearing accounts. That pisses me off. Like if, I, if I'm betting 1,000 to 3,000, 1,000 to 5,000, then I got to have 25, 50 dimes per account, let's say. So if I'm going to leave, let's say, 50,000 in an account, why wouldn't I leave that in, even in Coinbase is going to give me five, five and a half percent just sitting there. Just leaving my money sit there. To have it sit in a sports book that I'm getting zero interest for, that to me stings. Now, on top of it, if you're being asked to pay to ch be charged on top, dude, get out of there. Yeah. Again, I don't know how. Nah, thank God I deal only deal with agents. And credit shops, Jesus, man. I guess they can do it because of all the, um, what's it called? The crazy juices that the other books charge. Dude, I saw, I saw Caesars had NFL lines, minus 15, minus 15. The whole, you could bet the whole week one, I think. Minus 115, minus 115. People are just betting it. Like, who cares? All right, big deal. Well, it's 110, 115. Dude, you know how big of a difference that is in your win percentage? In the hold? Like, if you could just talk a book into giving you from minus 110 to give you minus 105, you only have to, your, their hold is cut in half. Like, their, their built in edge goes from 4.5% to like 2, 2.5%. Two yeah. That's all you'll have to overcome. 
by lowering the VIG. Dude, those are the ways you you win. Let, paying to bet somewhere, yeah, that ain't that that's 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 negative EV all day, all day, all day, man. All right, Lee Pratis. Listen, Pratis is. I'm looking for a spot to fade him. I don't know if this is it. Lee's been off too long, but he does have power. And if he lands, he could take anyone out of there. The thing is, Pratis is on that hot streak with the cigars, blah, blah, blah. You're going to pay a premium for him. Again, he's one of those guys that got circled looking for a place to fade. Tafa Walker, I'm going to tell you right now, I love the Walker side. There is opposition against me. Um, one of the uh, groups that I moved for in MMA actually bet Tafa, um, took Tafa. At minus 115, I believe, minus 120. So there's a difference of opinion between me and some of the sharps that I respect, which is no surprise. Most times in MMA, that's what you get. A lot of two-way action because the lines move so significantly, which is why it's one of the most beatable markets and arguably why we've turned so much profit in MMA this year. All right, Kulibao Hamosh. I like the Hamo side. Kulibao has no business at all being a uh, favorite of any kind over anybody pretty much at this point. He's in dire win of a need coming off back-to-back -back losses, and he's a 500 fighter at best. Uh, Santos O'Neal, quick turnaround for Santos. I don't like it. She's a stud, don't get me wrong, uh, but it's just not a great situation for her. So laying this kind of vig, when the situation doesn't favor her, no way. Dog or pass. Give me O'Neal all day. Jenkins, come on. It's one of those, I hey, wins the fight, but it's a bad bet. Happens all the time. Nolan wins the fight, bad bet. You're going to see that a lot, you know? Song, Song should win that fight. I haven't dug into it very deeply. Um, what was sticking out? There was something sticking out in that fight that turned me off. With Kenan and Glenn, what was it? Oh, 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 I think he that he he opened such a big favorite, such a big favorite, Kenan, and it just that the moved so much. But I think that was one of those cases of the uh, early manipulation move to drop. Um, because it got it down to one sixty and then came back up. Probably a pass. That looks like a pass to me. Dog or pass. Ricky Glenn or leave it alone. Ricky Glenn or leave it alone. And Nico and Aguilar. Nico and Aguilar. I like the Nico side, obviously. Uh, yeah, but I want to get that and get that done for you guys and give you guys a few hours so that you could dig in deep and also see what you agree with, what you don't agree with. Uh, like I said, leading into the football, if not next week, probably the week after, we will have two of these. I want to do one for college football, one for NFL, because I want to explain how we're going to bet college, how we're going to bet NFL, talk about the teasers, the two-team teasers, and then talk about the advantage teasers that we played last year, 14-16. We'll be doing that again in the NFL. I can't do it as premium plays because not everyone has access to them, but I will be releasing them every week and we will keep them on the side, our own record to see how those do, of course. Um, and also we're, I'm going to share all the half a point buys because we will be buying half a points when it's advantageous to us. And uh, yeah, all that good stuff. And let me see one more time. Anything else coming in? And I'll be able to get you guys out of here. Let's crush some freaking MMA today. Let's kill that UFC 305 card. All right. The Bears got there. The Bears got there. They scored a touchdown or something at halftime, someone said. God damn you, Giants. You couldn't tie it up. You had to kick a field goal. Ah, see, that's why I don't look at scores. I accidentally looked at a score. You broke my heart. You broke my heart.
All right, guys, you got to have a great day. Enjoy the games. Do some damage. And uh, let's just keep it going. Remember, football is upon us. And uh, we're just a few weeks away from the regular season. God bless. And uh, enjoy the rest of the weekend. Let's get you out of here.